Trying two Chinese dishes I've never had before. This is a noodle dish called Liang Pi. Handmade noodles, peanuts, chilies, and cucumbers. You get this sauce, mix it up. Oh. Oh my God. It's actually really refreshing. Every noodle is coated with the sauce. Spicy, it's a little peanutty. I also got what's called a Chinese mo. Oh. Eat this over the noodles in case anything drops. The pork inside of this is super fatty. The outside's nice and crispy, almost buttery. This almost feels like a really crunchy pastry. This place is called Kin West Noodle with one of my highest ratings of the year and one of the best new things I've had. 9.4 out of 10. Come try this immediately. A lot of you seem to think that Tommy's original has a better chili burger than Carney's. If you know. They're very similar. The amount of raw onion at the one at Carney's is a lot better. I do remember Tommy's having better chili fries though. Mm. These are still up there with Johnny Rockets for the best chili fries of all time. Mm. I would give the burger like a 6.7 out of 10. The ratio of everything inside is a lot better at Carney's, but the chili fries, four chili fries, I would give like a 9.4 out of 10. They're some of the best. Check out Tommy's. Mm. After my recent Del Taco burger experience, I'm inspired to try it again. People still think this is better than Taco Bell. Wild. So I got this guy's order. Seems like he knows some shit. This is the green chili quesadilla. Extra sauce. Doesn't look like anything special. That's ass. A taco dipped in queso. Mm. The queso here is great. This is fire. And lastly, some chili fries. RIP to my stomach later. This is also terrible. Del Taco is not better than Taco Bell, but the queso is outstanding. 3.9 out of 10. The most hyped up fast food breakfast right now is from Taco Bell. Let's give it a shot. I got a breakfast cr- It's so small. Mm. Oh. The eggs are pretty fluffy. There's a sausage in here. There's also a hash brown in here. And they already tossed the eggs with a little of that chipotle cream. Let's put some hot sauce on it right over the top for daddy. This sausage tastes like mystery meat, but the hash brown on the egg, gas. Next up, a hash brown. Oh. They don't give you ketchup, so I'm using hot sauce. I'm not even mad. Ooh. Mmm. Wow. This holds up to a McDonald's hash brown. This is very good. And lastly, the Cinnabon Delight coffee. Just as I suspected. Tastes like sugary j- It's good, but it's way too sweet. Altogether, I'd give this a 6.9. For fast food breakfast, it's pretty top tier. Mmm. The Jones on 3rd fried chicken sandwich. My boy Rick Locke says this is one of the best fried chicken sandwiches in LA. If you know, you know. Jones on 3rd has the best pickles in LA. The chicken is super juicy and very crispy. It's a little plain, but overall a pretty delicious sandwich. Giving the sandwich a 7.9 out of 10. The short rib grilled cheese here still reigns supreme. First time trying Red Lobster. I got what's called the ultimate feast. Shrimp, lobster, and crab. But first, I've always wanted to try a Cheddar Bay Biscuit. You know what? I like this. And now for some seafood, some shrimp and what looks like garlic butter. This is good. Some fried shrimp with marinara sauce. Mmm. Correction, cocktail sauce, actually. Is red lobster good? Lobster tail dunked in some butter. Oh. Lobster's okay. Cooked perfectly, but it has barely any flavor. I have an idea. Oh, oh, look at that. Yo, Red Lobster, if you're looking at this, create a lobster dish with this sauce. Some crab legs. Ooh. Crab's bomb too. Everything could have a little more flavor, but it's definitely a stand-up seafood spot. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'd give Red Lobster a 7.3 out of 10. Mm. I'm starting a new series. Throwback foods you probably forgot about and if they're good or bad. Number one, the CPK barbecue chicken pizza. California Pizza Kitchen actually is credited with inventing barbecue chicken pizza. I haven't had this in at least 15 years. The actual chicken on this is delicious. Every other part of this sucks. The dough's pretty floppy except for the crust. The barbecue sauce is very sweet. A nice dip in the ranch. This ranch tastes a little weird. Compared to the rest of the pizza in LA, I would give this like a 4.3 out of 10. Please recommend some throwback foods for me to try. Today I'm trying Dave's Hot Chicken with cane sauce. This may be the best thing ever. <gasps> oh my God. Let's make a little Sammy. Bread, tender, fries. 
The cane saws. Oh, yes, father. Put a little pickle on it. If you get the opportunity to try this once in your life, you will understand. The spiciness and the overwhelming flavor from the chicken mixed with this mayo-y beautiful sauce. I give this combo a 9.0 out of 10. These are crispy birria vampiros. Some consomme. Queso dorado taco. Oh my god. Villa Lobos is so good. They also give you little packets of salt. I love putting this on a cabeza taco. I've never had it on a birria taco. Honestly, it's already salty, doesn't need it. The Vampiro, nice and crispy and cheesy. The best birria Vampiro in LA is at Birria San Marcos. If that's a 9.5, this is an 8.8. .8. Trying Guatemalan food today with my best friend Vinny, who happens to be Guatemalan. Hello. Sandwich with beans, cream, and some queso fresco. Tastes a lot like a black bean hummus. Shockingly fantastic. Some taquitos. This is a very delicate tomato sauce. The lady behind the counter said these sausages are really good. Wow. Really good. There's some sort of herb in this that kind of tastes like mint. This is fantastic. All right, Vinny, what is this? Pepian. Your mom was a huge fan of this, right? Definitely. How is it? So good. If you think mole is a little much, a subtle version of it, chili relleno sandwich. Funny enough, this is the one he was most excited to show me. It's actually my least favorite thing I've had so far. Agreed, actually. And lastly, we have this red chicharron stew. Oh my God. We barely even have to chew that. So good. Overall, giving my Guatemalan experience an 8.0 flat out of 10. Go visit your nearest Guatemalteca. Is that you said? Try Bolivian salteñas. Why not try some more Bolivian stuff? First up, I got something called sopa de mani, which is like a peanut soup. Oh my God. Does it have anything on the bottom? Is this chicken? Peanutty chicken broth with the most tender fall apart chicken. This is up there for one of the best soups I have ever had. Next up, we got the salteñas. Oh, it's like a stew and an empanada. This is delicious. Salsa verde. Oh, I love this. That was the chicken. I can only imagine how good the beef is. The pastry itself, outstanding. I actually kind of like the chicken more. And I also got some papa rellenos, which are like potato croquettes. Oh, I wish they had more of the meat mixture. Put some salsa on this. It's good, but the other two were way better. Bolivian food, phenomenal. Giving this an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Mm. One of the most requested comments, try Colombian food. Just do it. Starting off with a beef empanada. Gotta dip it in the sauce that's like mayo-y and ketchup-y. Mm. Perfectly crisp. There's a lot of potato in this and not that much meat, but it's still really good. Dip some of it in some ahi. Damn, that's spicy. I got a cheese stuffed arepa. Mmm, yo, that's so good. The actual cheese in here is delicious. And finally, I got some camarones tumacuenos. Oh my God, look at that. Let's get some shrimp first. Wow. This tastes a lot like cow soy, which I love. Throw some ahi on there. Everything in one bite. You guys have been really crushing it on the recommendations. This is phenomenal. I was also told by multiple sources to have postobon. Kind of tastes like apple flavored cotton candy in a soda. Hey, right, Colombian food. I thought it was fantastic. I would give this Colombian experience an 8.6 out of 10. Go check out Sabor Colombiano. Is Nobu Malibu overrated? Coming at you with an honest review. Let's get started on some must haves the yellowtail sashimi with jalapeno and ponzu, of course. The best crispy rice spicy tuna in the game. The albacore with Meyer lemon. The tiradito, which is fantastic. Look at how pretty that looks. The artichoke salad is to die for. Yes, a salad. And you got to get the popcorn shrimp tossed in spicy mayo. Classic. Everyone tries to do it like them, but theirs is the best. And this, the king crab amazu, lightly battered with this beautiful citrusy jalapeno sauce. You will love it. I got three of them that night. The sea bass, if you're over the miso cod, you don't need this ribeye with truffle butter. I think it's really overrated. The molten cake, aka the bento box, great. So, is this overrated? If you come here for sushi, you will think it's overrated. But if you come here for the hot and cold dishes, you'll think it's fantastic. 9.5 out of 10 and top five restaurant in LA. Del Taco apparently has a good burger. I like Why does this low key smell really good? <laughs> there is no way.
for a garbage fast food restaurant burger this is actually good meat doesn't feel or taste tremendously processed i don't know what cheese they're using in this but it's so good i would prefer this over a whopper or like a mcdouble it's not mind-blowing but compared to the other fast food burgers it's top-notch compared to all the delicious burgers in la this is like a 6.4 which is still insanely high for del taco Trying the viral DIY Raisin Cane Sandwich. Buttered Texas toast. Open her up. Piece of chicken. Some fries. Cane slaw. Cane sauce right over the top. Oh. You cannot tell me that doesn't look amazing. More cane sauce. Mmm. Louisiana hot sauce. Just right over the top for father. Oh, yes. Mmm. This is a great addition. Those sandwiches, 7.6 out of 10. The chicken is still pretty mid. An honest review of the new Chipotle brisket. I'm also gonna try this little dragon thing. This is what it looks like. Huh. The meat's really dry. It's pretty smoky and it does have a really nice spice to it though. Try this dragon sauce trend. Mmm. It actually tastes really good. Walk with the salad dressing from Chipotle. Unbeatable match. Mmm. Honestly, not a big fan of the brisket. If I'm rating this meat compared to the other meats at Chipotle, I would give this like a 4.5 out of 10. First time trying Somali food. I got what's called chicken sukar. It kind of looks like a Peruvian saltado. My meal came with a random banana. Hello? Ooh, some rice on the bottom. Some lemon. Some of the sauce. It's peppery. It's got nice chili notes to it. My only criticism is that the chicken's pretty dry. A little chili pepper. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. <coughs> I also saw some guy inside licking his bowl clean from the soup. It kind of tastes like a pickled cabbage soup. I'm not a big fan of this. But this, ah! I would definitely have this again, rating the Somali experience an 8.3 out of 10. Mm. Doing the highly requested blazing challenge from Buffalo Wild Wings. Through the bag, this smells spicy. This is not to show off my spice tolerance. This is more just to see if they're enjoyable. Oh, f All right, it's beginning to burn a good amount. I'm also sweating a lot. This is covered in that. Oh my God. I'm at, my mouth is on fire right now. I'm also stuttering. Last wing to go, and this looks like the worst one. I am sweating so much. Oh, that is not enjoyable. I don't recommend that. Oh. Outside of the Pocky One Chip Challenge, that was probably the hardest spice challenge I've done so far. On the spicy scale between one to 10, that was like an eight. That was really hot. It's been five minutes now. Look at how swollen and red my lips are. Trying the Reaper at Dave's Hot Chicken. The hottest order you can get at Dave's. For those of you that don't believe me, Reaper right there. Sandwich first. Just the cough. Beginning to sweat a good amount. I had a bite of my friend's Reaper Tender like four years ago and thought it was insanely spicy. Now I'm just enjoying it. That is delicious. Okay. The tenders are definitely a little spicier. I'm sweating. Woo! Hot, but not unbearable. Oh. Last bite. I'm just sweating a lot. Best spice level here is still extra hot. I would give this an 8.6 out of 10. It was fire. Trying the viral In-N-Out tomato wrapped burger. I hear this is better than protein style. Yo, what? This absolutely shits on protein style. This is so good. I was expecting to think this is the stupidest trend ever. If you want lower calorie In-N-Out, try this immediately. Trying Wingstop's new hot honey rub. Smells kind of weird. No ranch first. Some ranch. If you like sweet and salty, this is going to be right up your alley. Try the boneless one. Also pretty good. Uh, that ranch is so f 
good. Wing Snub's fries have significantly grown on me since I found out about the lemon pepper fries. These bad boys dipped in the ranch. Oh. Mm. I still don't love the sugary aspect of the fries, but they're good. All around, I'd give this Wingstop experience a 7.7 .7 out of 10. I prefer the lemon pepper wing and maybe something spicier, but these are still a hit. Mm. Try Salvadorian food, specifically pupusas. This one has pork, beans, and cheese in it. Oh my god. Apparently, you're supposed to put this cabbage and this hot salsa on top and eat everything in one bite. The cabbage is acidic, so it cuts through all the richness of the cheese and the bean. And that spicy salsa ties everything together perfectly. Next up, chorizo. This might be the best chorizo dish I've ever had. This is going to be a very high rating. Salvadorian horchata. Oh. And my last one, jalapeno cheese and bean. <laughs> the undercarriage of cheese. One of my highest ratings of the year, a 9.4 out of 10. Outstanding. First time trying Korean kimbap. If the food comes in a bag that looks like this, gas. <laughs> From my understanding, kimbap is basically Korean sushi. First up, we got the spicy pork. Mm. I love Korean food. There's various vegetables in here. Pickled daikon. What looks like a pickled jalapeno. Mm. And next up, the mayo shrimp. Mm. It just tastes like shrimp tempura roll. Let's get some sauce in there. Mm. Honestly, I love this. I want to try like every flavor now. I'd give this an 8.6 out of 10. It's so good. Mm. Episode 8 of the best food in LA. The best gourmet burger comes from South Beverly Grill. Oh. They cut it in fours if you take it to go. Oh, shit. This is what it's supposed to look like at every angle. Kev, what do you mean by gourmet? You sit down at a table, you have a proper waiter or waitress, and it's 20 bucks. The meat blend is fantastic. Sesame seed bun, I believe, is made in-house. South Beverly Girls spicy mayo is incredible. Mmm. That's a fat nut. What did he say? Hey. Little tangy, little spicy, and super creamy tatty. I think burgers are meant to be more of a fast food or fast casual thing. Not really a gourmet item. But with that said, I'd give this an 8.9. Panda Express is doing burritos. No bullshit. In limited stores, it's whatever you get in a plate, you can get in a burrito. I thought this was fake. Got cha mein, orange chicken, and kung pao chicken. You know I love Panda Express. I'm in heaven. Some chili sauce right over the top. They now put their sweet and sour sauce in packets. Looks the same. Look at that bite. Hmm. Would absolutely get this again. I would give this a 7.8 out of 10. This is so good. In and Out has apparently changed something. The chopped chilies are now different. As you can see, they're a little bit bigger. Let's try it in the burger and on the fries. I got no chopped chilies in that. I feel like they're significantly less spicy, which I don't like. The burger is still so good. Animal style fries. Little chili peeking out there. I'm just going to try one on its own. They taste more like spicier banana peppers, which I don't think is better. Fries at In-N-Out are so bad. Dude, you don't like In-N-Out's fries because you don't get them well done. You don't get them light well. Stop. They suck. Just accept it. Previously, I would give In-N-Out in the nines because I love In-N-Out. It's exactly my style of burger. The meat quality is fantastic. I'd honestly now give this an 8.9. I still love this, but I can't justify putting this in the nines. Going to LA for the first time in two weeks, one of the top three places I need to try. Let's go. Let's start with breakfast. The two bagel places you need to try. Courage Bagels and Yeasty Boy. Breakfast burritos, go to Wake and Late and Cafe Los Feliz. For sushi, go to Shibuya, Sushi Fumi, or Sushi Gen, or Gen. I don't know how to pronounce it. Nashville Hot Chicken, go to Howlin' Ray's. That's it. Burgers, you gotta go to Burgers Ever Say Die, In-N-Out, and Easy Street. Right now, I'd say those are three very, very good options all around the city. For pizza, you gotta go to Apollonia's, Pizzana, D-Town or Prime Pizza. Tacos, you gotta go to Teddy's Red Tacos for birria. You gotta go to Tacos 1986 for the Peron. And number three, El Chato Taco Truck, only at nights. It's amazing. For pho, pho so one. For ramen, tatsu ramen. For dinner, if you wanna spend some dough with a really nice vibe, Osteria Moza, Nobu Malibu, Mother Wolf, Parks Korean Barbecue, Genoa. Top 100 list coming. Is Pink's Hot Dogs overrated? For those of you that don't know what that is, it's LA's most popular hot dog stand. I got a chili cheese dog, a Chicago dog, and some fries. Fries first. They're crispy. They're seasoned really well. 
Mmm. A Chicago dog with what looks like a spicy Polish sausage. I'm not sure why they call this a Chicago dog. There are no sports peppers. There isn't any neon relish. The actual sausage itself is great. Just listen to the snap. It just squirted everywhere. Daddy. The toppings are whatever. If Portillo Chicago dog is a 10, that's like a 6. And lastly, a chili cheese dog. The actual chili in this is whatever. Again, the hot dog itself, great snap. I would just say it needs a lot more onion. If Carney's chili dog is a 10, I would give this a 7.5. And, and if I'm rating the fries alone, I'd give these an 8.5. Trying the viral chamoy pickle. And I brought a towel because apparently this stains everything. This is what the pickle looks like. Take a sip of the pickle juice. So far, it just tastes like a pickle. This really does stain everything. Ooh, it's got a little kick to it. Look at that, it's so red. I also saw people eating this with Takis, just for science. Oh yeah, low key, this looks fire. Now we're talking. I was expecting the pickle to have a little more flavor. It's pretty solid and it's worth a try. I'd give this combo a 7.8 out of 10. It's nothing mind blowing, but with the Takis, it's a lot better. Do you have any food poisoning stories? Drop the names, lol. I do have some fucked up food poisoning stories, but I'm not gonna burn out the restaurant for something they didn't intentionally mean to do. However, I went to this food truck like five years ago. As I take my very first bite into the sandwich, I immediately taste something that's not right. It's just not right. Something is wrong with the sandwich. But because I'm an idiot, I take another bite, and then that's when I was like, okay, no. So I threw it away. Fast forward to like three o'clock in the morning. I wake up with excruciating stomach pain. It felt like that sharp gas pain you get in your stomach that literally never went away. And then following that was my stomach turning for what felt like 10 years. Long story short, around the clock going to the bathroom. And when I say around the clock, that means I would drink water and then pee out of a place you're not supposed to pee like five minutes later. I end up having to go to urgent care. They take a sample. I had salmonella and I don't wish that upon anybody. It sucked. Trying new Frito-Lay minis now in a convenient, easy to pour can. Of this lineup, which would you say are your favorite flavors? For me, it's these three. They're so cute. A classic. Sun Chips Minis Harvest Cheddar. And lastly, what I'm most excited for, the Cheetos Minis Flamin' Hot. Ooh! Mm, still my favorite. The flavors you know and love, now in a can. First, I'm trying Al Pastor French Fries. Looks like a ton of Al Pastor, McDonald's style fries, jalapenos, and of course, cheese. Ooh. Oh my God. Comes from a taco spot called Tacos de Huichos. Just look at that. This is amazing make sure that al pastor marinade on the outside and it just rubs off on each fry some of their spiciest salsa some salsa verde <laughs> spice from the salsa takes us to the next level the sour cream is nice and creamy that tea. i would happily wait in a 10 or 15 minute line to get this 8.2 out of 10. All right, these are the top five Nashville hot chicken restaurants in LA in order. At number five, you got Cluck and Blaze in Glendale and Long Beach. Fantastic overall experience, and I'm dying to try this breakfast burrito. At number four, you got the Red Chicks in downtown, arguably some of the best Nashville hot chicken tenders I've ever had. Number three, you gotta give a number three spot to Dave's Hot Chicken. Arguably the best delivered product, and consistency is key here. The owners are also fantastic, really cool guys. Number two, you got Hotville, and although their chicken is fantastic, their fish is arguably better, and I love their sandwich. Number one, you got to give it to the goat. Howlin' Rays, there is a reason why there's a three-hour line to get into this place. Best overall sandwich, best overall Nashville hot chicken on the bone. Number one, in my opinion, without a shadow of a doubt, number one spot. I need your help. Feel free to make them kind of crazy. What content ideas do you guys have that you want to see me do? Drop them in the comments. You have full creative freedom. Go nuts. This is a massive chicharron. Fresh tortilla. Little shards. A little bit more. And their spiciest habanero salsa. Just right over the top.
I'm about to announce the winner of the Hometown Throwdown Challenge, courtesy of Red Baron. If you haven't seen the taste test videos, go check them out now. I tasted five hometown pizza hacks, San Diego, Orlando, Pittsburgh, Scottsdale, and Omaha. These were all really creative hacks, but the winner who gets a thousand bucks, a golden pizza cutter, and a year supply of Red Baron pizza is Pittsburgh's pierogi-inspired pizza. Congratulations, Annie from Pittsburgh. This is coming your way. This was a lot of fun, and I would definitely do this again. I had Jolly Bee's chicken with gravy. I really want to try KFC's now. A little dip in that sauce. Daddy? The crust is kind of whatever, but the chicken's pretty juicy. Let's try thigh. Nice chunk of meat with the gravy. It's good. Jollibee is just way better than this. I would give this like a 6.6. .6. It doesn't have that much flavor. First time trying Nathan's hot dogs. I got a foot long because I'm the glizzy god. This is mad overrated. The bun's pretty stale. The hot dog doesn't have much snap. Costco's hot dog shits on this. I'd give this a 4.3 out of 10 at best. Popeyes has ghost pepper wings now. Let's see if they're spicy. These are some small ass wings. These are like squirrel knuckles. This is what it looks like. Hello. They're not hot at all, but the chicken's pretty juicy. Also, when I was checking out, I noticed they have a jar of jalapenos. These are so good. Dipped in some gravy. Ooh. Jolly Bee's version of that is so much better. Popeye's chicken is actually really juicy. I think this is gonna be the best. Right over the top. It's beautiful. Mmm. Sweet Heat at Popeye's is a top 10 fast food sauce. On the spiciness scale, this is like a 2 out of 10. Taste-wise, I'd give it a 7.8 out of 10. It's okay. I have an interesting idea. Nashville Hot Chicken Tenders in gravy. <laughs> Actually, looks really good. Mm. Probably one of the better combos I've had at KFC. I would give this like a 7. Holy sh shit, that's bright. Everyone's been telling me to eat my in and out like this. Bun, cheese, meat onions and spread and that's it let's give it a shot i'm not gonna lie looks bussin mm. it's really good this tastes more like a philly cheesesteak than in and out if i got chopped chilies on this i gotta have it with my lettuce and tomato it's just been that way for too long by the way, I'm in desperate need of new recommendations, so if you guys want to comment where I should try next, that would be a huge help. There's a new Indian dish that everyone's losing their pants over. First time trying lamb Rogan Josh. Look at the color. I want to try it without the lamb first. Oh my God. That's a little spicy too. Let's try it with some lamb. Lamb is super tender. All right. This is when shit gets wild. Look at this garlic naan. Look at the undercarriage. Nice and crispy. Look at that. Oh my God. Our curry's super rich. Mmm. I had Indian food last night, and this is still a fat nut. I would absolutely eat this again. 8.8 .8 out of 10. Oh my god. Trying all the Starbucks TikTok trends. This looks really good. First up, we have the pink drink, add raspberry syrup, peach juice, and vanilla strawberry cold foam. It kind of tastes like strawberry cough syrup. Next up, we have lemonade raspberry syrup with strawberry acai. That is fucking great. It's like super refreshing raspberry lemonade. Next up, iced hazelnut latte, vanilla cold foam with caramel drizzle. <laughs> this is so fucking good. If you like a lot of cream and sugar in your coffee, this is going to be right up your alley. And the hazelnut gives it a slight Nutella flavor. The top of the list so far. And lastly, we got a salted caramel cold brew. I saw Aisha trying this and I kind of wanted to try it. The salt makes this super addicting. On some of the sips, you get the bitter coffee, you get the sweetness up here. All together, really good. I would get the top three again. Try them, let me know what you think. Summer is coming to an end, and Christmas is coming up really fast, and I really would like to take a picture and a match of pajama sets with me and Lil Boo. We don't even gotta know each other like that. My cousin, a booster, the pajamas is free, and the photo shoot is $24.99.
finally made it to Cardenas. Look at the seasoning on the outside of this. The crunch on the skin. Wild. Dunkin' in some habanero. Oh my. The top layer of skin shatters like very thin glass. The meat itself in here is pretty dry, but there's so much tender fat in it that you don't really care. I'd say this is as good as the one from Vallarta. Would give them both an 8.8 .8 out of 10. The most requested comment. Try the Burger King crispy chicken sandwich. That looks really good. Let's open this up. Two pickles, ton of mayo. Looks like some sort of spicy sauce on the actual chicken. This actually tastes like the KFC Nashville chicken tenders in a sandwich. The chicken is super crispy. The bun is a little stale, not spicy at all. Chicken's also a little dry. It's such a shame because if this was actually spicy, it would be really, really, really good. It's not terrible, but I would never get this over Popeye's, KFC, or Chick-fil-A. 5.9 out of 10. Where should I go next? Try Greek souvlaki. Ooh. You could tell the chicken was just making out with the flames the whole time. Mm. The chicken just squirted on me. I served it with some pita. Oh. Daddy, chill. A little tomato and onion. Looks like some tzatziki. Damn, that looks good. Mm. Oh my God. There are fries under the chicken. Yo, this is so good. The tzatziki, nice and creamy. My only criticism is that I wish the meat was a little thicker. This is right up my alley. Grilled meat and carbs. I also know there are much better versions of this out there, but I would still give it an 8.3 out of 10. Mm. First time trying Japanese onogiri. Definitely just butchered that. I came to a place in Glendale called Gamtu Bop. Okay, so you get these rice bowls. They give you fresh seaweed. Nestle it in. This looks so good. Oh my God. How is it taking me this long to try this? This is a spicy shrimp. This is what the inside looks like. It's loaded with spicy mayo, super creamy. A crunch of that seaweed. This one is their beef. It's a little sweet. This with spicy mayo would be fantastic. Lastly, I got one of my favorite things on the planet, unagi. Shout out Ross Geller. Huh? Unagi. It tastes like tender barbecued fatty chicken. Crushed the entire box. I would give that a 9.1 out of 10. That was delicious.